Hello, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today you're going to be learning all about my texturific shader brushes for Procreate. This set is made up of a wide range of pressure sensitive, texture rich brushes that build up in density as you apply more pressure with your Apple Pencil. They are also great for adding texture and dimension to flat illustrations. These brushes are super versatile and can be used in a variety of ways and I'm excited to show you some stuff about them. So you'll see there's a wide variety of textures as you start to play with the brushes. There's some speckly textures, paper textures, there's grunge, there's some scratched up stuff, cardboard, wood, fabric, there's just a ton of great stuff that you can have fun making art with. 30 brushes in all. So as I mentioned, these brushes are pressure sensitive. So if you draw lightly with your Apple Pencil, you will see that the texture is very light and then of course if you press harder, you're gonna get a more dense filled in texture. Using the maximum brush size, you can see that they can fill in very large areas of your canvas. And if you reduce the brush size, you'll see that the grain maintains its size. The brushes are designed to work this way so that you can maintain the texture that you're working with, but get in and do really fine detailed work as well. You can adjust the scale of the texture by going into the brush settings. Tap on the brush and then tap grain at the bottom of the panel. You'll be using the scale slider to do this adjustment. By default, all brushes are set to max, so it's really easy to go back after you adjust. But all you need to do is slowly move the slider down and you'll see the size of the grain decrease. Now you can draw with that brush and see the scale of the texture smaller. Let's go ahead and shrink it down just a little bit more and you can see it even smaller. This is useful if you're doing very fine details or if you're using a low resolution canvas. There are a few brushes that have directional grain. The brushes will always draw with the grain going horizontal to the top of your iPad. So all you need to do is rotate your canvas a little bit and you'll see you can change direction. All right, let's go ahead and get into a demonstration. We're gonna be drawing an eggplant. A lot of times when I'm drawing, it's really helpful to start with a reference. So I open up Safari in the split screen view so that I always have my reference next to me when I'm working. Just gonna type in eggplant into Google and kind of search through the images to get something that inspires me. When I'm doing these drawings, I like to start with the most basic shapes possible. So this is gonna be a bean kind of shape for the eggplant. Then I'm gonna add the kind of stem on top in green. A little tip is to use the eraser tool to get really sharp points on things that you want to be pointy. And we're gonna draw the stem. And now we're ready to start adding texture. I'm gonna swipe right with two fingers on the layer in the layers panel in order to turn on alpha lock. I'm gonna sample my original purple color by tapping and holding on that eggplant. And then in the color picker, I'm gonna choose a color that's just a few shades darker. I'm choosing the modeled shader brusher to do this first layer of texture. I add the darker color just kind of on one side because I feel like that's gonna be where the shadow would be. I always like to think about where the light might be coming from when I'm adding texture. And with these drawings, I think it's fun to choose a variety of textures. It doesn't have to be super realistic. It gives it more character if you kind of do stuff that isn't exactly how an eggplant would look. For the stem, I'm gonna show you another technique of adding texture. This is gonna be using layer masks. In the layer panel, tap the stem layer, and then in the menu, tap select. Then create a new layer, tap on that layer, and then in the menu, tap mask. And then we're gonna deselect by tapping the select icon in the toolbar. So now we're adding texture on a completely new layer while maintaining the shape of the layer below it. Again, we're gonna sample that green and choose a color that's a few shades darker and start adding texture. There you have it. Next, we're gonna draw some carrots. So I'm gonna search Google for carrot. No, not carrot top. And then I'm gonna go over to images and kind of take a look at all these and see what I kind of want my carrot to look like. I'm not really copying anything in particular, but it's nice to have all these different images of carrots as I'm deciding what I want my carrot to look like. So we're gonna use orange and draw our carrot shapes. I'm gonna create a new layer to draw the stems, and then I'm gonna create another layer behind that first stem layer to draw the stems that might be behind the, uh, the other stems. Those are gonna be just a little bit darker. I'm gonna use the alpha lock method to draw the texture. And I'm using the weathered wood brush. This is one of my favorites. I found it to be very versatile and I actually use it a lot. 
This brush has directional grain, so be sure to rotate your canvas. Just use two fingers to rotate it, and then you can put it in the direction that you want. Let's add some texture to those stems. I'm using the grungy linen shader to do this in a darker green. And then on the foreground stem, I'm gonna use a different texture because I like a little variety. This one's light scratch. And I'm gonna use a lighter green to do these. I decided it's still looking a little bit flat, so I'm gonna add some more texture. This time I'm playing around with the fibrous paper shader, but I'm kind of thinking that I don't like how smooth this all looks. I want it to look a little bit more grungy, so let's do something else. Let's do some darker colors over here. I'm gonna use the ice rink shader for that then some lighter colors with the mottled shader. And then I'm gonna darken up those kind of carrot lines, add a little bit more texture on that side. And now I'm really liking the way that looks. We've got one more demonstration for you. We're gonna be drawing a lemon. So first again, I'm gonna look up my reference photos over here, pictures of lemons. I'm drawing the basic shape of the lemon using one of my brushes from the Texturific Liner set, which is a part of the Texturific bundle. This is the round grain liner. It's basically just an oval with two little nubs on each end, and then I'll fill those in with color. In the drawing, we want every new color to be on a separate layer because they're all gonna have different textures added to them. An easy way to do this is to just duplicate the original layer. So we're gonna duplicate the slice, I'm gonna drag in the new color I'm gonna want that layer to be. And then I'm gonna erase away the parts of the layer I don't want, revealing the layer below. Now I'm gonna duplicate that new layer for the next color. Choose my new color and drag it on over to recolor it. And then use the eraser tool to make this look like lemon sections. I'm gonna zoom in and kinda of clean up these corners to make them a little bit more round. The last thing I want in my drawing is a nice green leaf to add a little bit of color. So I'm just gonna draw that in on a new layer and then arrange everything how I want it to be. Now let's add some texture. I'll turn on alpha lock on my lemon layer, then use the pepper shader and a darker yellow to kind of add like a nubby rough texture to the bottom. Sample that yellow again and then choose a lighter color to add some texture to the top. This one is with the fluff shader. Add in some even darker shading. This one's with the mottled shader and just kind of keep adding textures until I like the way that it looks. As you can see, I'm using the texture to kind of show the way the light might hit the lemon so it's brighter on top and then darker kind of on the underneath side. All right, let's deck out our lemon slice. I'm gonna go ahead and add some texture to the peel. Now I'm gonna use the weathered wood brush to kind of add that stripey liney texture into the sections of the lemon. I'm just gonna rotate as I go to get all the stripes going in the right direction. This time I'm gonna use a layer mask because I'm going to be layering the texture in two different angles. You'll see in just a sec. So select the leaf layer, create a new layer, tap on it, tap mask, and then deselect. Then I'm using the wood plank brush this time to add the texture um, kind of to the angle that it would be on a leaf. I'm gonna erase away where the center of that leaf would be. Then I'm gonna duplicate that mask, delete what I had so that I can add the other color. Rotate the canvas to the right angle and draw in the texture that way, and then kind of erase away what I don't want. And there you have it. When life gives you lemons, you draw them and procreate. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I cannot wait to see what texturific artwork you make. You can purchase the texturific shaders on Creative Market or at bardobrush.com. I would love to see whatever artwork you're creating with them. So if you're posting on Instagram, please tag your work with hashtag Bardo Brush. Happy art making. If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day.